So 90 days and you're out, and where do they ship you? Well, uh, I uh, had orders to go to Camp Walters when I graduated. And where's Camp? Camp Walters, Texas. I had 30-day leave. And come home, and that's when uh, Mother and her dad picked me up down there at Malden and took me up to Elbow. Oh, so you were a brand new officer the first time you met Mom. Yeah. Were you feeling pretty hot stuff? Oh, I was, I was kind of satisfied. I'd gone through quite a rigorous deal that a lot of them didn't make. For an old country boy, well, wasn't too shabby. So what, uh, what was your impression of uh, Orville Ward? Was that the first time you'd met him? Or? Oh, no. What? I, knew, I knew mother most of her life. She was the same age as my sister, Roberta. Just a little girl. I wasn't too impressed. She was cute, awfully cute. She was much too young for me. I don't even remember what I did while I was on leave that time. Not to. Uh, Nothing too exciting that I know of. We didn't have a car, and I'd probably run around a little bit with some of the guys that might still be there, and Mark Ward and some of them that never did go in. What about Joel and, and did they? how'd they miss out? They well, Joel was too old. I guess Floyd was too. Elmo ended up going in, didn't he? And Robert. Were you all in at the same time at one point in time? Well, I was the first one in, and then uh, uh, I don't remember. I think uh, Bob was the next one to go in, and, and then Elmo went in. I think Elmo got a deferment because he was farming. And uh, then he he was married to. Oh, Elmo was. Yeah. What was your? Uh, I mean, when you joined the military, your church activity was convenience at best. It, did you dad and mom were they quite worried that the military was going to corrupt you? faith in me though he ordained me an elder soon uh, not too long before I went in the service and uh, when I got in the service I used to go occasionally I went to some of the Protestant services and drank the wine for sacrament <laughs> but I uh, I was I was pretty careless. pretty careless. You have your 30 day leave and then they send you to Texas? Went down to Camp Walters, Texas. And I was only there for a month and got orders to report to San Francisco Port of Embarkation. We didn't know where we were going. We were quartered at the Fairmont Hotel, which was really rough duty. We'd go down to the finance office every day and draw our pay. They pay you. They paid you daily. Well, we were broke. We needed money. And they'd tell us, "Well, nothing today." So we just poop around. Go sightseeing. Sightseeing. One day they told us, "You're." Find now to your quarters. You stay there and we get ready to ship out. They load us up, took us down to the pier, and put us on the Ile de France. It was a French luxury liner converted into a troop ship. 
when we got underway, well, then they told us where we were going. India. India. To train Chinese Well, troops. we didn't know what we were going to do. We just knew we were going to India. But we had a suspicion that uh, it had something to do with the Chinese because they had a couple of uh, Chinese language instructors on board ship and gave us Chinese language training on the way over. So what'd you learn? How about how? How about what? How about how? What's that? Ding about how? Very good, no good. Is that Mandarin or Cantonese? Mandarin. I really wasn't too fluent at it. They get us up there in the bow of that ship, give us those instructions. You know, it's hard to teach Chinese, Japanese, where they've got no written language. They had made a written language out of it, but it was hard to get a proper voice inflection from just looking at the language. There's so many of their words that as they spell them phonetically, well, they all spelled the same, but they uh, meant different because they uh, had a different voice inflection. In other words, the word P-I-N-G, which was pronounced Bing, uh, it had five different meanings. It meant soldier, it meant uh, ice, it meant, uh, and it was whether you said bing, 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 however you happen to say it. You, you had mentioned one time that on that trip over that uh, somebody went overboard? Well, when we got down around the equator, man, she was hot. Now you were going, you were going, uh, so you went we from San Francisco, San Francisco headed and went, south. And went to Hawaii. Oh. And from Hawaii we headed uh, for New Zealand, but uh, to miss all those Jap-held islands, we almost came back to the coast of South America and then down to New Zealand. And then from New Zealand, well, we went down to the end, south end of Australia. And from there, we went on up to Bombay, India. What was your impression of New Zealand and Australia? Well, we saw very little of Australia. Uh, we did get off in New Zealand. I spent Christmas in 1943 in New Zealand. That's their summer, isn't it? But it was really, really hot down there, and they had a lot of troops on there. I think we had uh, 2,000 troops on that ship. And the enlisted men, well, they put them down in the lower decks. Crap, there was no ventilation down there. They, so they used to come out after dark, go up on the upper decks and sleep up there on the deck. The MPs would get up there and run them off because they weren't supposed to be there. That was supposed to be for officers and students. And this one guy, when they were running them off, there was a rope hanging down from one of the upper decks and uh, he went to this I didn't see it but this the story went. he went uh, jumped over the rail was going to grab the rope and slide down on the next deck and he missed the rope and went in the water they didn't even slow down for him they, they couldn't we were traveling blackout Traveling without escort, we probably subs in the area, and if we'd have stopped, we'd have had to turned around, and turned the lights on. It wasn't worth killing two thousand people for 